Okay, welcome class. Uh, welcome to our new online learning sphere. Uh, whether this video is posted directly on Blackboard or on YouTube uh, remains to be seen. I'm going to be working through uh, trial and error, a couple of different tech techniques, but I have figured with my own strengths and weaknesses, my own past experiences, that recording lectures via a screen capture, like you can see before you, I got my mouse, uh, my screen is currently being captured, it is on the full screen PowerPoint sort of slide. This is just a blank slide so I can kind of doodle as I'm talking to you guys. You will more than likely throughout the lecture, uh, not just this one but here on out, hear a little scritchy sort of sound. That is the tablet that I am working on. I apologize if uh, the screechiness gets to be sort of loud or irritating at points. I've tried a couple of different uh, setting systems and at the end of the day the capture that I have set up right now is the best case scenario, I promise you. Uh, either the audio sounds terrible if I'm in the big lecture hall or you get a little bit of an occasional sound if I'm in my office. So, uh, see that's the first of the announcements. There are a couple of big general announcements that I'm going to be making just to get us all on the same page. Most of this is a little bit of repeat or slightly updated versions from what's already posted on Blackboard where I will be posting announcements consistently throughout the rest of the semester assuming that we are going to be online for the rest of the semester. Now, first, uh, I'm recording this on Tuesday. Uh, what is this? March 17th. Um, so this is during your current full course exam week. So you're taking uh, your exam right now. Going to be turning it into me on Friday. Um, just to walk through a little bit of the reasoning, I figured that taking uh, a week-long exam while some of you are still at home um, you know, might not have all of your resources at your disposal, but I know that you are all at the point where you are smart enough to figure out with the resources that you currently have at hand how to ace this exam, whether it be the online textbook. If you do have your notes, if you don't, uh, there are all of the resources on Blackboard available. People have been sending me emails already just for clarification on some particular question. If you are unsure what it is I'm asking for, that's awesome. Please, uh, throughout the semester, assuming again that we're going to be online for the rest of the time, uh, please be sending me all of those uh, questions. I want to make sure that our communication, you know, is as crystal clear as it possibly can be while we are at a distance. Uh, let's see, second, um, a couple of just general recommendations for online learning. Um, and part of the reason that I want to go into this level of detail is that even if campus opens back up again come March 30th, even if students are welcome back, I am strongly debating on just closing the classroom doors for the rest of the semester. The reason being is I know that there are uh, some immunocompromised students in our class. I don't want them to feel the pressure that they have to come into the classroom. Or even if uh, you know they don't come into the classroom, I know that some of them are athletes or are plugged into some extracurricular activities on campus. I just don't want uh, you know even a classmate to possibly pass something that could be passed on to them. Um, let alone. The, immune, or the immunocompromised students in my class and in other classes, uh, there are also faculty who are of an older age in this department and in other departments. And so if we are going to be practicing that good old social distancing, it's going to be uh, really important to make sure that we are adhering to the practices of social distancing as much as possible. And this is going to be uh, including but not limited to keeping out of the classrooms where large groups of people are going to be sitting right next door to each other. So with that in mind, uh, social distancing practices acquired, we are going to more than likely be online for the rest of the semester. So what does that mean for you and your study habits? Uh, what does it mean for you in terms of homework and general expectations? So my uh, recommendation to you is going to be to follow sensitivity is still kind of bugged. I will be working on this. Follow a regular routine. Whether the routine be the same class routine that you have been following, you know, if you're coming to chemistry at 9 a.m. or if you're coming at 10 a.m. Uh, and you found that this works really well for you, if you are a morning person, if you want to stick to this morning schedule, feel free. I will be posting lectures in advance, more than likely the beginning of the week. So if you want to binge watch all three of the lectures for the week, or if you want to spread them out on a regular Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis, as we would be doing throughout the semester, feel free. If you are an afternoon person and uh, having to get up 
for morning classes has been a burden to you the entire semester, feel free to watch, you know, the lectures later. These are going to be recordings, postings. They're not going to be live. No, uh, no live streamed, no streaming in general. Um, I don't want to have to, uh, you know, run the gambit that technology will or will not fail us. So I think recordings are going to be the most consistent way, uh, technologically speaking, to make sure that the lecture material is getting to you on the, uh, like as need be. So if you'd rather watch a lecture at 1 p.m. or 2 p.m., or if you want to watch the lecture at like 11 p.m., just so long as you keep up that routine, 11 p.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every night, that way uh, you know what you're going to be doing when, not just for my class, but to balance the rest of your classes that may or may not also end up being online for the rest of the semester. Uh, so on top of following a regular routine for the rest of the semester, uh, looking ahead to some facets that have been a part of our class, the entire time, so let's say homework. Uh, for the next couple of lectures or following the week-long exam that we're all currently taking at this time, uh, homework is going to be on Connect for the next couple of days just as we're making this adjustment, as you're getting used to following this new routine, as you're getting used to watching the lectures either in the morning or the afternoon or binge watching the three for the week or spreading them out or <laughs> saving them all for the end of the week. Not that I would recommend that. Do not put off watching everything until Friday, namely because there will be homework assignments due on Monday and Wednesday and Friday. So homework will be uh, following that regular Monday, Wednesday, Friday due date at 11 59 p.m. that we have been doing for the semester so far. So I feel like we're at a little bit of an advantage compared to other classes since we've already been doing homework online for a majority of the semester. This is not to say that I'm going to be getting away from worksheets completely. I just want to streamline uh, this transition as much as possible. So getting everyone's brains back into chemistry mode with this week-long exam, and then we're going to be transitioning into lectures Monday, Wednesday, Friday, homework via Connect online, at least for this first week. Worksheets that I will be passing out uh, will be strictly on Blackboard. Blackboard is going to be our board. Blackboard is going to be our go-to uh, central hub pretty much for the rest of the semester. So any announcements, any worksheets, any keys, any links to videos or links to demos or links to labs, which we'll talk about in a second, will all be on the Blackboard website. And I will be posting announcements anytime I then end up posting any type of worksheet or link, what have you. Uh, I'll always be trying, or I will try to always be as clear as possible on Blackboard. Let's see, so homework talked about, yeah, as we are finishing chapter 19, getting into chapter 15, which is our next section. So chapter 19, which is where we are right now, is kinetics. We are going to be getting into chapter 15 after this. Uh, and so chapter 19, chapter 15 will be following more towards the end of the week on Friday. Uh, and so be watching out for that. Next, office hours. I know plenty of you guys got into the habit of attending office hours regularly or even just swinging by my office to chat. And so the question then remains, what's gonna happen to these live conversations? Well, uh, I'm going to be keeping office hours still just because we're getting online doesn't mean that office hours are going to end. I am going to be setting up a Discord channel for this class. What is Discord? It is a combination instant messenger and audio visual chatting app, piece of technology, software. Uh, it's akin to a combination of like, you know, Facebook instant messenger or AOL instant messenger, uh, along with something like Skype or uh, Zoom or f uh, FaceTime. So it's kind of like an, an amalgamation of all of those. The great part about Discord then is uh, I'm already well versed in Discord. I use it regularly, so the uh, setup for me will not be difficult. I actually do have, not to incentivize too much, but I have Discord on my phone. I use it all the time. Uh, it's going to be the best way to come into contact with me or like reach out if you're really having an emergency and you really don't understand what's going on. Uh, so social media, here to save the day a little bit. The uh, Discord channel, once it is set up then, like how I'm going to be running office hours is I will uh, be in Discord 
uh, like be active in the chat, be in either a voice chat, um, voice chat, or if you have, uh, you know, just a quick question that you want to instant message instead, uh, there will be a channel inside of our, our Discord where you can do so. Just a real quick question. If you want to like type it up, I can respond. That way it would be faster than an email or, you know, we don't have to spend the time uh, shooting off emails back and forth. An instant message would be much faster in that case or a voice chat. Um, if you're used to coming in or you're just, <laughs> you want to vent about life in this transition, feel free to hop into that voice chat. Um, hours will more than likely be extended. They're not like, I'm not going to have just one office hour a day. It will more than likely be, let's say from like one to 3 PM Eastern standard time. I don't want to set that time in stone yet since, uh, I am also making this transition. I don't know what my own day to day is going to be looking like now how long these lectures will take to record, etc. So office hours, uh, when I actually have the Discord set up, which by the time you're watching this, more than likely the Discord will already be set up and the office hours will be outlined. But I wanna let you know that I am muddling this over and the Discord will continue throughout the rest of the semester. All right, next up, the big old question. Lab, how are we going to be finishing this component during the semester? Well, fortunately we have, uh, I don't know, the, the fortune, fortunately we have the fortune of being in more of a low tiered lab where the expectations for general chemistry lab are to build the general skills both in lab and in writing. And the point that we are already at in the semester, we've, we've pretty much already accomplished this first goal. Technical skills, done. Uh, you guys know how to use glassware, you know how to read menisci, you know how to use the scales, you know how to uh, you know, use graduated cylinders, uh, stir, record temperatures. There were a couple of uh, techniques that we haven't gotten to yet, like doing titrations or UV vis. Um, sadly, those were the next four labs lined up. But though, like these technical skills, you uh, will also be learning in other classes. So it's not as big of a deal if we don't get to them hands on in general chemistry. What we're more than likely going to be or focusing on for the rest of the semester is going to be uh, really honing in on that writing component. So continuing to work through the results and discussion sections as we have been doing, um, kind of getting into that new sphere. And uh, we will be continuing this. And exactly what form is still kind of a question mark. I'm going to be working through these details. And again, by the time you watch this entire lecture, uh, this, this component will already be figured out, or at least I will have a better idea of how I want to start approaching it. Uh, let's see. Last but not least, um, kind of circling back around, we're coming full circle here to the idea of exams for the rest of the semester. So is the huge multiple choice week long exam going to set the standard for the rest of the semester? Answer is, I'm not sure. This exam, uh, I really wanted to design again as a way to kind of get your brains back into chemistry, give you a myriad of different problems. There are 30 problems to work through. If you're kind of stuck, at least it's multiple choice. You can make a best guess kind of based on the work that you're doing, the work that you know how to do. But for the fourth exam or the final exam, assuming that, uh, again, campus is closed, what is the final week schedule gonna look like? We don't know. We as faculty are still trying to figure out the answers to those questions. So the final exam, I'm gonna leave as sort of a black box for now. Similarly, the ACS exam, we don't know exactly what these two, the uh, ACS and the final, are going to look like. However, exam four uh, is more than likely going to end up being another week-long exam, or if it is a shorter exam, uh, it will still be entirely multiple choice. That way, if you have questions and you don't have the way, uh, you know, don't have the means to like ask those questions right away, at least again, you can make sort of like a best guess. I think the advantage of really stretching out the exam. Um, yes, even though it takes up more time, uh, which you could be using for your regular routine that you'll be setting up, uh, that's kind of the disadvantage is that it is so spread out, but the advantage is that it gives you more time to figure out what questions do I have and how can I approach this. Okay, so <laughs> with all of these announcements and all of this written down, I feel as though we can get started. So if some of the questions now that you have have been addressed in this little brief announcement section, awesome. If you still have questions, do not hesitate to ask me. As always, my email box is open once I get that Discord up and running. Um, 
no guarantee I will get to your message right away. It's not, uh, you know, I'm not constantly plugged in to my phone or plugged into social media, but it is going to be a pretty reliable source to get me in case of emergency. Uh, okay, so with all of this out of the way, it's it feels so weird not to be able to say like, okay, now does anyone have any questions to this? Because if you have questions, I'm not gonna be hearing those questions for at least one week when this video is going to be posted more than likely next Sunday. So it's a little bizarre, definitely disconnected, but I'm gonna try my best to be uh, the same entertaining, bubbly, engaging type of professor that I want to be, even if we are now at a distance. Okay, so where we left off, before spring break, before all of this <laughs> pandemic, um, was in kinetics. We're still talking about kinetics. Uh, so far, we have talked about the concentration dependence, we have talked about the temperature dependence, we've talked about the time dependence, introducing all of the integrated rate laws. Where we are right now, then, is finishing up this conversation. Uh, in this video specifically, I'm just going to be finishing up Chapter 19, Part 3. And where we left off in Part 3 was the concept of the half-life. Now, I'd made a really bad joke at the end of class that this is not the half-life in terms of video games, this is not the half-life in terms of the cursed half-life that Voldemort lived, this is a half-life, chemically speaking, which is the time required for the reactant concentration to drop to half of its original value, hence its name being half-life. It is the time component, so that's where the life comes from, uh, that it's going to take for your concentration to drop in half, half-life. The other distinct advantage, as a brief tangent, to this <laughs> uh, lecture style is that anytime you need to, you, like, you need me to slow down, you can literally pause the video and take your time to record uh, or write down in your notebooks, take your notes, any of these like definitions or anytime I'm writing too fast. So I'm not going to slow myself down too much since you have that freedom. So if you need to pause, feel free, by all means, pause the video. Okay, so what does a half-life look like, chemically speaking? So let's take the example here of two nitrogen uh, or two dinitrogen monoxide molecules where nitrogen is the molecule in blue, our oxygen is the molecule in red. The decomposition then looks like we end up with two nitrogens and one single oxygen. So hypothetically, we can map concentration versus time just as we have been doing with kinetics, only the concentration is going to be number of molecules. We're not looking at a molarity or a molality, it is number of molecules. And so let's say we start with 16 molecules specifically. Well, the half-life is going to be the time that it takes, time being down here on the x-axis, the time it takes to drop this concentration from 16 down to half of that value, which would be 8. So what we have to do is on this curve of concentration versus time, check out where uh, the time, uh, where the time signature is that we reach eight molecules. So we're going to draw this horizontal line over to our curve as it decreases, and then trace the line down. And we can see that the half life, or T one half, of this reaction, this decomposition of the sixteen molecules breaking down, is one second. Now, interestingly enough, the decomposition reaction. Uh, or rather the half-life of this decomposition reaction repeats. And that is true for every reaction. So when I say it repeats, I mean, if we now take this eight uh, molecules to be our new starting position, and we want to measure the next half-life, we're going to look at how long it takes for this eight to decrease down into four. And similarly, we can follow this curve from the four over, trace our way down and see that it takes an additional second, an additional one second half-life for that uh, decomposition to occur. The next half-life to get from two to four, or um, four to two molecules, is another one second. The next half-life to go from two seconds to one second is another, or two molecules to one molecule takes another one second. And this would continue until all of our initial reactant, this N2O, runs out. So we can predict, based on half-life measurements, that this reaction, starting with 16 molecules decomposing, would take one, two, three, four, and for this last molecule then to break down an additional one second. So a total of a five second reaction just based on measuring half-lives. So if we want to find a way to calculate our half-life, uh, easily without having to measure concentrations and times, we can do so based on all of the integrated rate law equations that we derived the last class period before we let everyone go for spring break. Um, 
how we do this is we, uh, since by definition the half-life is the time it takes for our initial concentration uh, to divide in half, which is exactly what this represents here, we're going to insert one half of our initial concentration in for x in any of the integrated rate law equations. And then we will rearrange that to solve for t. So this is going to tell us the time it takes for half of the initial concentration to arrive. Each of our integrated rate law equations can be found below. We have a first order uh, integrated rate law, which was the natural log version. We have the second order integrated rate law, which is the inverse, the one over the concentration, and our zero with law, which is just the straight up concentration, since the reaction rate doesn't depend on the concentration of x in a zero with order reaction. So if you want to look over the derivations for each of these equations, that information can be found online already from our previous lecture, the previous example slides. In addition, the derivations for, for each of these, if you haven't seen, is found in a well, separate PDF uh, that has been posted on Blackboard. Uh, totally optional to read, though there are some additional example uh, problems in the PDF to work through some of these equations to really get a handle on what they mean. Uh, the half-life then for a first order reaction can be found by taking one half of x naught and we're going to insert it in for x. So into this natural log of x we're going to insert uh, this one half of x naught. Since now we have an x naught on the left hand side of the equation and an x naught on the right hand side of the equation, these x naughts when algebraically rearranging will cancel out. Uh, Coincidentally enough, in going through the derivation, which I would definitely uh, recommend checking out the separate PDF because I do work through the math there, uh, I definitely also leave this as a practice to the reader or a practice to the viewer to insert algebraically one half of the x naught into here, see how the math ends up working out. Uh, our k is left over when we solve for t, we have a natural log of two, I, or natural log of one half left over as well. So when we rearrange for t, giving us the t of our half life now, uh, the half-life expression for a first order reaction is always going to be equal to 0.693 divided by k. What's really cool about this before moving on to the second and zeroth is that the uh, half-life for a first order reaction does not depend on the initial concentration of x. Nowhere is there an initial concentration dependence. So you could start with 1,000 molecules, you could start with two molecules, you could start with a one molar solution, it doesn't matter. Your half-life is always going to be 0.693 divided by your rate constant. And again, your rate constant is where your uh, temperature component is, it's where your activation energy component is, it's where your collision factor component is. So really what we're saying here is that in a first order reaction, the half-life is going to depend on the temperature, the activation energy of the reaction, and your collision factor, but not on the initial concentration of your reactant. And again, here's where I would pause for questions, but there are no questions to be had. So definitely take kind of a pause, mull over what I'm saying as much as you need to. Uh, you know, write down any questions to send me either in an email or come to office hours later in Discord. Either way, I am here to answer questions, even if it's not in real time. Okay, so a second order reaction uh, is going to be where you have one over your concentration of x, this being equal to this linear form where your slope uh, of this linear line is your rate constant k, uh, and your y-intercept is one over your initial concentration. So similarly, or similarly, if you take one half of this initial concentration for x, plug it in for this x down here, and rearrange to solve for t. We are now going to be, uh, in doing so, solving for the half-life of our equation. And so what this would tell us, uh, this equation tells us, is that the half-life of our equation is dependent on 1 over your rate constant k, as well as uh, your initial concentration. So we can see in the second order reaction, and if we kind of look ahead in the zeroth order reaction, there is a dependence here on your uh, initial concentration. Let's see, so what I'm going to do since in this new system it's not as nice as the old, I can't just flip my pen over to erase things, I have to actually like come over here and switch manually what kind of pen I'm using, it's annoying. The second order half-life expression 
is 1 over our rate constant. So one common thread we can see in each of the rate constant or half-life expressions is that our rate constant is always in the denominator. In other words, the time it takes a reaction to reach its half-life is always inversely related to the temperature, the activation energy, and the collision factor. In a second order reaction, the initial concentration is also down here in the denominator. In other words, the half-life is inversely proportional uh, to the half-life. So the stronger or the greater your initial concentration, uh, the slower it will take to reach your half-life when it comes to a second order reaction. This is the exact opposite case in the zeroth order reaction, where again, the zeroth order's significance, uh, the reason why it's called a zeroth order, again, it's kind of strange to wrap your head around, but what it implies is that the rate is in dependent of concentration of x. And uh, what we find though is that the half-life is not independent of the concentration of x. So the rate is independent of your concentration of x initially or otherwise. The half-life is not independent. It is very dependent. In fact, it is directly dependent where the greater your initial concentration, or concentration, the greater your half-life will be. In other words, the greater the concentration you have, uh, the greater time it will take to reach your half-life. The exact opposite is the case up above with our second order reaction. Again, the greater your concentration, the uh, smaller your half-life will be. In other words, it will take less time in a second order reaction to reach this time period here. All right, so let's take kind of a pause and look at what the equations do for us experimentally or theoretically when working through this type of a problem. So let's look at a second order reaction, uh, a CLO decomposition reaction, and let's find the half-life. So our CLO naught, our initial, initial concentration, Again, just to remind everyone of what this notation means, our initial concentration here is 1.50 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. So we're already starting with a very small concentration. Our rate constant, rate constant is 7.22 times 10 to the ninth. So a very large rate constant. And our units here are inverse molar, inverse seconds. So if we want to find what is the half-life of this equation, uh, we're gonna come over, check out, we're not looking at a first order reaction, we're not looking at a zeroth order reaction, we are working with a second order reaction as is being told to us. So we will be using this form of our half-life equation. So we need to know what our rate order is, in other words, in order uh, to know which half-life equation we need to use. So same kind of rules apply with our integrated rate law, concepts, we need to know which rate order we're working with to know which equation we're working with, uh, or vice versa. If we know our equation, we know our rate order. So let's take that equation from the previous slide. The half-life uh, is going to be equal to 1 over k times the initial concentration of our CLO. Now we have both of these pieces given to us. So our half-life is going to be equal to 1 all divided by 1.50 times 10 to the negative eighth molar all multiplied by our uh, rate constant. So I've kind of flip-flopped these two things here. Initial concentration I inserted first, but both of them go in the denominator, so algebraically speaking the order does not matter. So 7.22 times 10 to the ninth inverse uh, molarity inverse seconds. So what's going to happen with our units, because I am going to continue to harp units, they will become increasingly important as the semester continues. We have a molarity here and an inverse molarity right next door, so these two molarities will cancel out. This will leave us with an inverse seconds here. Uh, the inverse seconds though, since we are in the denominator, we have an inverse of an inverse. In the end, this seconds will jump into the numerator. 
So when we perform the calculation numerically, the number that we're left with taking 1 over 1.5 times 10 to the negative 8th, multiplying it by 7.22 times 10 to the 9 is a 9.23 times 10 to the negative 3. And again, this is in 1 over 1 over seconds, which means that the seconds are going to jump up into the numerator, leaving us with a simple second here. In other words, the half-life of this reaction, of this decomposition reaction, is 9.23 thousandths of a second. This reaction uh, happens very, very quickly. The CLO is going to decompose very, very quickly. Okay, so moving forward, though, uh, with our example problems like so, I will definitely recommend that people take their time, uh, either follow along with me or pause the video, um, you know, kind of take the time to mull over the concepts by yourself before approaching the problem, because the answer will be here in the video. Once you hit play again, we can work through everything together. But a part of the reason why I take my time in class, allowing everyone to sit and work through the problem on their own, is to give you really the chance to kind of mull over what it is that we've been talking about, give me a break, give you guys the chance to kind of like sink your teeth into what it is that we have been introducing or working our way through. The concept of half-life is not uh, too bad. It may seem bad right now since this is going to be our first lesson, uh, you know, digitally or remotely if this happened very quickly, if the actual content happened very quickly. Again, do not hesitate to pause the video whenever you need to, to sit down and kind of think about what it is that we're uh, talking about in the lecture, write down any questions that you might have, and I can answer them accordingly. Um, also, working through the textbook at this point point is going to be incredibly useful to you. So definitions that we talk about, more example problems that can be worked through, can be found inside of the meat of the sections, the corresponding pages that I always list uh, in the beginning slides. Um, so if you do have any questions on this material, do not hesitate to let me know. But otherwise, here we have a couple of section review problems, uh, the dependence of reaction concentration on time. So these uh, problems listed here, the 19.51, to 19.54 are all going to be about the integrated oof, there we go, rate law problems as well as some half life problems. So if you want to get a bit of a refresher on the integrated rate laws since uh, you know there were some questions on the exam but overall most of what we talked about was a week and a half ago or two weeks, I think, at the point that you'll be actually viewing this. And the half-life is all brand new, so definitely get the chance to work through some of these example problems. A Connect homework assignment will be posted following this content, and that will be due... Connect... Homework will be due... Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. Uh, the Wednesday day... Oh no, what's the date today? It should be the 25th is when this will be due. Uh, but either way, it's going to be the Wednesday following your viewing this video at 11.59 p.m. So the homework should be live now at the time that you are seeing this, uh, and it will be due on Wednesday. So when we come back together, uh, or when you watch the next lecture video, uh, the next homework assignment corresponding to that lecture video will be due on Friday and then the next lecture will be due the next Monday, so we will can be continuing with that uh, pattern that we've already established. Um, all of the lecture videos will be at your disposal currently for the week, but the homework will only unlock on the appropriate day. So in other words, uh, even if you watch the next lecture video today, the homework assignment corresponding to that video will not unlock until Wednesday, and it will not, or and it will only be available through Friday. So I'm still, even if you're binging content, I'm still going to be forcing uh, the information through your brain slowly throughout the week. Um, either way, if you have any, again, questions or concerns, please let me know. Um, if the audio was bad, if the visuals were bad, if it ends up being kind of glitchy somehow, um, you know, please let me know not only if the content is, uh, you know, not quite sticking in your brains, but also let me know if the delivery of the content also could be worked on uh, in some way. In other words, please critique this performance. <laughs> let me know if there's anything else that I should be doing or could be doing um, as the semester continues to evolve. Um, otherwise, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day.
I was going to say morning, but I don't know if you're necessarily going to be watching this in the morning, but have a wonderful day. I do hope that this transition for you uh, will be easier rather than harder, and we will all get through this together. Uh, but for the time being, class dismissed.